Well, I'm here in the nursery Upland Woodland, uh, at least that's its temporary name for right now, where uh, volunteers about two years ago, uh, maybe about a year and a half ago, now uh, removed a whole bunch of honeysuckle, uh, bush honeysuckle in here. And Adam just very recently sprayed out all the winter creeper down on the ground that was growing underneath the bush honeysuckle. And so today I'm here with a student researcher, Sarah Leader. You guys might know her mom, one of our volunteers, Cindy Leader. So Sarah, what are you doing in these woods? Well, I'm inventorying all the trees and shrubs here. Why are you doing that? Uh, we're looking at how the composition may change and diversity pre and post removing all the invasive species in here. Well, that's really cool. Uh, what do you hope to get out of this? Uh, personally, I hope to learn how to identify trees in the wintertime and get a, a better feeling for some some good old bottomland uh, forest here. Like that giant silver maple right there? Like that giant silver maple. Just identified him today. That's cool. Uh, got a favorite tree yet? I would have to say the beautiful American sycamore over here. Something about that white bark in the midwinter time is just pretty nice. They are awesome. Before coming here, I had identified trees in Wisconsin and only by their leaves. So I'm hoping to learn how to identify trees in the wintertime along with shrubs um, and to understand the composition and ecology of bottomland forest a little better. Cool. Um, what's the project that you're working on entail here? So we're going to inventory uh, every single tree and shrub right in the nursery area. All right, so you're getting everything as close to species as possible, I'm assuming? Yes, yes, uh, and we're measuring the DBH of trees. Oh, well, how do you go about doing that? Well, you have this DBH tape here, and you, um... Go uh, all the way around the tree. About 1.4 meters off the ground. And then you measure the DPH. It tells you right there what the diameter of the tree is. That's awesome. You don't actually have to do all the math. Measure it with a regular measuring tape Thank and then you. divide by pi. Just too much, too much math out here. <laughs> Awesome. Well, we look forward to seeing the progress over this. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm here with Sarah to get an update on how her tree inventory is doing. She's in her last few days of the inventory. All right, Sarah. So how is it going? You've had about three weeks on this inventory and your last day is tomorrow. Uh, before heading off to a really cool internship with the Nature Conservancy in Nebraska. Uh, I'm very jealous. Um, with the famous Chris Helzer, the prairie ecologist, <laughs> if anybody's uh, familiar with him and has read his blog or follows him on social media. But anyways, uh, Sarah, what have you gained from this experience inventorying all these trees here in Missouri with your previous work being from Wisconsin, correct? Yeah. Uh, so, so what have you gained from this experience? And uh, well, let's just hear a little bit about that first. Well, before um, when I was looking at trees, I would mostly look at the leaves and sometimes the bark. But now I see how much uh, how much you can identify trees just from their bark and their habit and their buds. Um, and if you can do that in the winter time, then you can do that year round. So I think that's a pretty valuable thing to learn. Uh, I'm excited about taking with me. It is. It is the best time of year to learn your trees because then you'll always be able to find those little details to identify them. Um, so here in this uh, upper nurse nursery woodland, uh, what would you say is one of the most interesting finds that you've come across? 
there's a, a crab apple in the middle of the woodland that we weren't expecting seeing. Thought maybe it might be a hawthorn, but since there are no thorns, I'm thinking it's a crab apple, and that hasn't been confirmed yet, but it was an interesting thing to see. Yeah, it was just right in the middle of the woodland. Um very uh, upright and narrow so it's not like the typical crab apples you see pe planted in people's yards um what do you think is the most dominant tree so far in this inventory i'd say probably the silver maple or the box elder maple which we have right here uh box elders are kind of fun because you can uh, you can tell them apart easily they have opposite branching and they have green stems with little red buds on the end that make them pretty distinct. Bright green stems and stands out against the snow too. Just beautiful. What do you hope that we can do before you head out? What do you hope we can do with some of the data that you've collected? I'm hoping we can see the diversity. Uh, I'm interested in how even the diversity is because I know there are quite a few species, but um, like we just said, the box elder and the silver maple seem to be pretty dominant, so it might not be the most even species composition. I'm also interested in putting these uh, the information into iTree, which can tell you um, how much this area controls erosion and other things like that. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. Uh, everybody is going to be very interested to hear how this turns out, and I will keep them all updated. Thank you so much. <laughs>
and uh, it's just really, really cool to see uh, those what those services are providing. And over 25% of the trees in this woodland were in between the range of six to 12 inches in diameter. So fairly large, but some uh, uh, still very young trees, uh, like this tree that you would see behind me here. So not big monstrous trees, uh, but there were a few big, big silver maples and uh, some sycamores here inside this little section of woodland. Um, and I did want to give you a little bit of numbers for the trees themselves. Uh, we couldn't identify everything to species, so uh, just to genus, we're, we are looking at uh, 67 maples, 37 elms, 23 black locust. Um, let's see, what is the next highest? Uh, 10 hackberries, 9 sassafras, 7 ash, 6 oaks, six types of cherries and plums, um, six mulberries, five red buds, five black walnuts, four American sycamores, four dogwoods, three types of crab apple, three sweet gums, two buckeyes, one honey locust, and that one invasive tree I was mentioning earlier, uh, that one tree of heaven. Uh, however, uh, the six mulberries are more than likely all white mulberries, which are also invasive species. But they are unf unfortunately uh, very uh, prominent in the St. Louis urban area. So a lot of people will see mulberries and think that it's a good thing, but unfortunately most of the ones you see around here are the white mulberry. So yeah, a, a lot of really cool trees. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that update on Sarah's research. See you guys soon.